Jaudat Haidar was born just at the turn of the 20th century, on April 23, 1905, in the Lebanese city of Baalbek. At the outbreak of the First World War, Haidar's family was expelled to Turkey, leaving Haidar, eight years old at the time, with only his mother. She soon died of typhus forcing the young poet to embark on a long and harsh journey he made alone in order to rejoin his father and brothers. In 1917, the Haidars returned back to Lebanon, where Haidar soon commenced his undergraduate studies at the American University of Beirut, then known as the Syrian Protestant College. From the Syrian Protestant College, he then transferred to North Texas State University in the U.S., from which he graduated with a bachelor's degree in education in 1928. It was during this epoch in the U.S. that Haidar first started writing poetry, publishing his first poem, Dear Old Texas, in the Dallas News University paper in 1925. Writing, however, would not become a full-time vocation for Haidar for another couple of decades. During that time, Haidar forged a career first in education, his field of study, and then in industry. Haider served as principal of the Universal College in Alay, Lebanon in 1929, after which he assumed the directorship of the Najah National School in Nablus, Palestine in 1930. From education, he then moved on to industry, becoming in 1932 the first national staff employee in the Iraq Petroleum Company. He successfully rose up the ranks until he became Industrial Relations Advisor in 1956. Haidar served as General Manager of the Mideast Auto and Trading Company until his retirement in 1965. At the peak of the Lebanese Civil War, Haidar chose to retire in his hometown, Baalbek, where he spent the rest of his years. Haidar dedicated those years working the land, reading, and writing verse. He published his first anthology voices in 1980, followed by Echoes in 1989 and Shadows in 1998. In 2006, he published his last anthology 101 selected poems, which he wrote at the age of 101. It was also in Baalbek that Haider established Wahad al-Adab, Osis of Literature, a society of poets who strove to revive Lebanese poetry and enhance collaboration among the poets of the Bika Valley. Under his presidency, Wahad al-Adab restored the statue of renowned poet Khalil Mutran to the entrance of the historic city in recognition of the prominence of the native scholar, regarded as a symbol of Lebanese coexistence and diversity. Insisting he is a farmer at heart, Haidar, over 90 years old, said, I still farm my land to get the fresh smell of the earth. In a new interview shortly before his death, Haidar said, My secret for long life is always being thankful. Life is a gift. Be happy when you can. <laughs> Haidar has been honored with the Lebanese Order of the Sirars, the Gold Medal of Lebanese Merit, and the medal La Croix de Grand Officier de France. He has received several other awards, including the Papal Medal from Pope John XXIII for humanitarian work and also from Antiochus Pope Alexander III. His poem, The Temple in Baalbek, alongside 21 other sonnets, has been incorporated into the official curriculum for the Lebanese National Baccalaureate. 
A copy of the temple in Baalbek is also a permanent feature of the museum of the temple of Baalbek. On his poetic style, Jason Iwin, assistant professor of creative writing at AUB, wrote, he boldly fuses the poetic styles and sentiments of the romantic, Victorian and modern periods of Anglophone literature, while exploring issues of common interest to people living in regions as far apart as Texas and Iraq. Reflecting on the content of his writings, John Monroe, former professor of English literature at the American University of Beirut, said, Haider's poetry is not escapist, rather it is committed and concerned, but in no way partisan. Though not partisan, Haidar's verse is intolerant of intolerance and unsympathetic to all that harms nature and promotes discrimination. Through his verse, Haidar advocates resistance of the pen over the sword, believing in the pen to set the record straight and speak truth to power. To borrow Monroe's words, Haidar speaks with the confident tones of a man conscious of his humanity. Perpetuating the legacy of 20th century Lebanese writers who have contributed world literature directly in the English language, Haidar has left us with ideas from before and yet from far ahead of our times. of men and abuse.